Freedom Church, how are we all? Yay! Okay, um, I just like to. I was. I've just been to Sydney, and I came back yesterday, and I had an amazing time. I don't know about you, but I had a really great time. And so God's put on my heart this morning, um, Isaiah 12. So I'd just like to read it to you before we get into praise and worship. So it says, In that day you will say, I will praise you, Lord. Although you were angry with me, your anger has turned away, and you have comforted me. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord himself, is my strength and my defence. He has come, become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. In that day you will say, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make known among the nations what he has done, and proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done glorious things. Let this be known to all the world. Shout aloud and sing for joy, people of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel among you. So we're going to sing Let There Be Light this morning, and I pray that the Holy Spirit just fills this awesome place this morning. Standing on the promise of God, Jesus, his name is Jesus, give him a big round of applause now. We thank you, Jesus. It's great to be in the house this morning. And uh, welcome, welcome. If this is your first time here, love to have you here. And you can expect right now, if it's your first time, that about 200 people are going to surround you and give you the best greeting. We're doing greeting all around the house. All around. Come on, move. Move around. Greeting. <laughs> And they built brick homes. 
That was it. That was a big old house. I have seven siblings, eight of us live in that house, although it's not true, really true because my youngest brother was born about the time that I was a believer. And uh, great house. I took two of my grandkids there a few years ago, and uh, since then that's out on the farm. And they've got artesian water there now, and they've got like a rainforest all surrounding that house, and up near where that window is up that end there on that screen, there's a big shrubbery there, and my grandson didn't know the wasps lived in that shrubbery, and he climbed up the tree, and he wished he hadn't. But his ego was suddenly about the size of the world before he got up there. That's the house I got. But since then, I couldn't really say, or maybe I, maybe I can, maybe I'll try and work this through, how many houses I've actually lived in. I've lived in lots and lots of houses. When I got married, the initial house my bride and I had moved into was in Belmont Avenue, Cloverdale. Anyone know where Belmont Avenue, Cloverdale? You know, you've been there. And our first child was born, we were in that house, and uh, when he was six months old, we moved out of that house and we moved to Hong Kong uh, for two and a half years. While we were in Hong Kong, we lived in flat D5, fifth floor, from Ying Dai Hai Ting Hau Do, in Cantonese, that's where we lived, and, uh, and two more kids were born to us there. So in flat D5, Hong Kong, uh, Mum and Dad and the three kids, and we moved back to Perth, and while we were there, while we were overseas, we built a house in Greenmount. And with uh, our now three kids, we moved into the house in Greenmount. We were there for two and a half years before we went back to Hong Kong, and while we were in that house in Greenmount, we had another child born. So we moved back to Hong Kong now with four kids, and we lived in flat C15, 15th floor, for Ying Dai Hai, Ting Hao Mildo, Ting Hao Jungle Road, for those of you who don't translate. <laughs> And we spent another two and a half years in Hong Kong and we returned to WA and we moved back into our house in Greenmount and shortly after returning home from Hong Kong and living in that house, I gave my heart to the Lord. Right there in our house in Greenmount, in the, in the lounge room while my wife slept, while she was sleeping. I gave my life to the Lord. Three years later, I left my place of employment and went to what is now both seminary to do theological training and within 12 months we moved out of our house and I became the assistant pastor at Bellevue Baptist Church and moved into the Baptist Manse. Because it was free of charge for me, we rented out our own house. Because when you're a student pastor, you don't get paid much, so whatever cash flow you get, we, we did. And our fifth child was born at that time. Got a cash flow, that'll mess with it. And after 12 months, uh, my senior pastor, I was the assistant pastor, he, he had the trip to get married. He wanted to move into the manse. And so I got booted out of the manse and I moved back into our own house. But during that time, within 12 months, I received a, a call to come to be the senior pastor of Rockingham Baptist Church. And I moved from Greenmount to Rockingham and began ministry there as senior pastor and moved into 7 Gregson Street, Rockingham. You don't know where that is? Come look for it, Google it. My maps will take you right there. And so there we were, five kids and a dog and two cats. That's our home, right there. And when I commenced Maranatha College, now called South Coast Baptist, some students from here, some teachers from here, now there, we, we sold the manse to get a cash flow to build what is now uh, South Coast Baptist. And uh, Lara and I bought a house in 74 June Road, Safety Bay, and, and uh, Lara and Gordon and the five kids and the one dog and the two cats moved into 74 June Road and after two and a half years leading Rockingham Baptist Church and building all those buildings that you now see that they've just got there right. No, we worked hard to get them there. Uh, I began a brand new church called Spires Light Church. Have you heard of it? Yeah. And we sold our Safety Bay home and moved into a rental for almost 12 months while we built our first home in Val Davis in Arthur Tewer Drive. Then we sold that and bought another house in 17 Hoskin Street, Valdez, right near the deli. And then we built the current house that we're in, which is in uh, Goodison, close in Highbury Park in Valdez. That's a lot of houses. Lara and Gordon lived in a lot of houses. But a house is not necessarily a home. Are you with me here? That's what I want you to know this morning. A home includes more than bricks and mortar and a roof over your head. A lot of people have got flash houses with bricks and mortar and a roof over their head and there is visible sin inside that house. You're with me here? Mm -hmm. Give me the look that says if you are. If you are, we need to work on that. You need to put on a care card and we'll pray you through it, all right? 
A home isn't just about buildings. A home is about people and processes and understanding and meaning and maybe two cats and a dog. Maybe. Okay. I want to give you three quotes. They're not from the Bible, but they're about homes. Number one, our homes, oh, it is up there. our homes represent more than our financial assets. They have a deep and unique emotional meaning. Our earliest memories of home are often connected to our childhood, to maybe living in a Queenslander. Whatever it is, the meaning of home is a way of organizing and understanding the spaces within ourselves and the way the world is constructed around us. Quote number two, your home and family are your nest, the center of your life, the hub from which all your daily experience extends. Both as children and adults, our home and family are where we should feel most comfortable in the world. They determine how you make your life decisions. They shape your attitudes, your awareness, your self-esteem. A healthy home life is obviously a vital ingredient in the pursuit of a meaningful life. Make that home with us. That's so true. Point number three. Home is where the heart is. Now, this well-known expression indicates that home is somewhere that is both desirable and that exists in the mind's eye as much as in the particular physical location. Across cultures and over centuries, people of varied beings have made homes for themselves and for those that they care about. The Apostle Paul. You with me in this home thing now? See, in your house, I don't know what's going on behind the doors and the curtains when they're all closed. It could be as miserable as anything in there. Even if you do have the biggest big screen smart TV, right? It could still be miserable in there. You can have all the gadgetry, all the stuff going on. You can have the air conditioning on the hottest summer day. You can be gas heated on the coldest winter's day, but it's still be miserable in there. It's just a house. The Apostle Paul traveled to Philippi uh, to preach the gospel uh, and to commence churches, planting churches. Planting churches is a good thing. I'd love to start another church. Not to leave this one. Have this one's a home base and start another one. This would be the mothership church. Don't get too excited. Because when people go against me, I push hard, all right? Don't get too excited. When he arrived in Philippi, he cast a demon out of this troubled young slave woman who had this negative propensity for being able to make known future events to her owner. So if you're a, a, a racing betting man and she knows when the horse is going to win the Melbourne Cup, you'll put all your money on that horse because she said so. That kind of deal, you, you follow what I'm saying here? Well, Paul, you know, this was a, a, a demonic activity, and so he, 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 he cast the demon out. And, and then the owner of the slave girl picked up a stink and had Paul arrested and thrown into prison because he was so unhappy at losing his source of the knowledge of the future events and hence his source of income. And it was in prison that God's miraculous flow to the release of Paul and Silas, his fellow evangelists, an earthquake struck that prison and opened the prison doors and cast off all the shackles of all the prisoners and the jailer was overcome because he thought they're, gonna, they, they're all going to escape and then I'll, I'll be in trouble. And when he saw that they just all sitting there waiting for him, he was overcome with emotion and he, uh, and he asked Paul, he said, what must I do to be saved? And Paul gave him the answer to that and what I want you to notice when it comes up on your, your screen momentarily, Acts 16, uh, 29 to 33, uh, I want you to note the, the word household that crops up here. That's a key word, right? So, so when I pause, when it comes to like household, you know the drill here, right, in this church? You go, what the word is, yeah? Okay, and so I want to hear loudly household a couple of times. The jailer called for lights and ran to the dungeon and fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them out and asked, sirs, what must I do we saved them. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved along with everyone in your household. Ah, ah, it's working, isn't it? Make it back. And they shared the word of the Lord with him and with all who lived in his household. And even at that hour of the night, in the middle of the night, would you believe, that the jailer cared for them and washed their wounds, then he and everyone in his household was immediately baptized. Isn't that good? In the middle of the night, there was baptism service going on. What, what went down? That was home. That was a home right there. It was a household. It was a home. Uh, and, and when the dad believed and was baptized, the whole family said, Dad, if this is, you, we're, we're with you. And they all got baptized. Isn't that cool? Yeah. In the home. Yeah. The dad set the pace in the home. Yeah. 
He said, we're going to church, man, and we're all going. And there'll be no excuses. We're all off to church now. We're going to get baptized today. Back in your Old Testament, Joshua was kind of like that. He led the people of Israel out of slavery in Egypt toward the Promised Land. He got them into the Promised Land. Once he got them into the Promised Land, he challenged everyone to get rid of their foreign gods and serve the Lord. And, and you think, he, he, Moses and Joshua have been teaching and preaching this all the way uh, for 40 years from Egypt to the Promised Land about having, not having false gods. And they still got them. They said, you better ditch those. You know, that's what you better do. And in doing so, he said, get rid of your foreign God. And in doing so, he nailed his colors to the mast. He said, as for me, Joshua 24, verse 15. As, now, be the Lord and serve him with all, all the faithful. Throw away the gods that your ancestors uh, worshipped beyond the Euphrates River and eat and serve the Lord. Uh, and I don't think it's going to crop up there. But so 24, 15 is not probably going to crop up, so I'm going to give it to you anyway. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. I've got a plaque like that. Right in our foyer, you come through our front doors, and there it is, in the foyer. And I had a, I had a, a tradesman come around on, on Friday to put some uh, fly screen doors at my front door, right? Good to fly screen doors, you can leave them open and lock them, and if they're print safe, they're print safe, right? No one's getting in, and you can bolt on and leave it with a fresh area. So he came, and he came through the door, and he looked, and he saw the fly. As for me and my household, we will serve the... Lord. And he said, are you a Christian? I love this. See, I get a trainee coming over and he asks me if I'm a Christian. And I thought, well, either he is and we'll celebrate, or he's not and I'll lead him to the Lord. <laughs> I said, yes, I am. How about you? He said, me too. And he told me what church he went to. And I said, oh, Pastor Cintia goes to that church. And some of you remember Pastor Tio, I had him preach here like last year or year before. And he goes to that church. And so he got excited about it. And then I told him about Pastor Patrick Chen, it's to do with his Asian. And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah. And then I told him about having Joseph Wong, Jason Wong preach here on Father's Day. And he knew him too. And I said, we need to get up now and do the doors, all right? This is going to the doors. <laughs> As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Joshua led his family and his home into fellowship, worship, and service for the Lord. He said, "Ask me in my household. Now you think about this. They've been on their way for 40 years from Egypt to the Promised Land and they're traveling in tents. So when he talks about his household, he's not talking about the tent as the place where he lived. He's talking about the people who lived in there. Yeah. He's talking about his home. The home and the household is where relationships are honored and valued and people are honored and valued. Proverbs 31 uh, gives voice to this whole premise. Uh, Proverbs 31, had a wife of noble character who can find her, find her in a good home. She is worth more than, than rubies. Uh, Proverbs 31, <coughs> verse 11, her husband, he's in the home too, uh, has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Proverbs 31, 28, uh, the kids are there too. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. And he's got a good job, this, this bloke too, uh, in the home. Proverbs 31, verse 23, her husband is respected where? At the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. Uh, is this good? I hope you get this, because a home is more than your house. I've lived in a lot of houses. If you count it up how many I've lived in, I can count it, you can tell me later on how many I've lived in. There's lots. Yeah? In, 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 in two different countries and in two different states in Australia. I've lived in a lot of, but the home is not the house, it's the people who live in there, whether they've cats and dogs, that's not that. Ephesians 5.25. We go. Husbands, a lot of homes have got a husband in them. Yeah? <laughs> Think about that. Does your home have a husband? Maybe it does. What, what's the husband got to do in the home? Husbands, this is down to you now. Love your wife just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for it. But that's a whole other message, isn't it? Well, how did Christ love the church? Nailed to a cross, flogged, crown of thorns. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Moving on, Ephesians 5, 33, however, 33, however, each of you must also love his wife as he loves himself. Because guys, we don't have any problem with the latter bit. It's the first bit we've got to get around, right? Uh, love himself. And the wife must what? Respect the husband. Let's go. Let's bring the kids into the home. Ephesians 6, 1 to 4. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise. So what? So that it may go well with you. Obviously, if you're not honoring your parents, it's not going to go well with you, kids. So 
I think about that. Uh, it says they go, well, we, and you may enjoy long life on earth. Obviously, you're not going to live so long if you're not honoring the parents. And you might smile about that if you're a kid. Your parent, mm, I don't know. Fathers do not exasperate your kids, your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and the instruction of the Lord. The home is more than a house. It is a place and an environment of mutual honour and respect and safety and protection, a place of identity and belonging and acceptance and celebration and meaning. And part two of the message. That's part one done, right? Part two may not be quite as long as that. We'll have people punching. So stand by, strap yourselves in, fasten your seatbelts. The church, just as your home is more than fancy bricks and mortar house with a roof over your head, the church is more than a building. The church is more than a campus. You can drive down Baldivis Road, and a lot of you just drove down Baldivis Road and found us by driving down Baldivis Road, and you can pass by this property, and you can make a remark, and many of you have done and will do, and so we just drove past Fires Life Church. You can say that. What you did, actually, was not necessarily to drive past Fires Life Church, but to drive past the property belonging to Spires Life Church. The church is the people. Yeah. Got this on again. I gave you a little historic overview of all the houses Lyra and I and our families lived in, and lots of houses, both in Queensland, in WA, and in Hong Kong, and back with them. We're not done yet, by the way. Yeah? We're not done yet. I want to give you a similar thing about Spires Life Church. <coughs> You need to take the trip with me right now. Here we go. Pictures. That's where we started, in the liquor bar. <laughs> leisure Inn, in fact. It's Leisure Inn. Uh, it was called the Function Room back when we started there. And uh, it is now called uh, the Swinging Peak, I think. I think that's the Rocking Hand Swinging Peak. And we, we, that's where we started. Number one, it cost me 20. I put the first 20 bucks into this church to get going. I hired the room for 20 bucks. That's all it cost me. And we turned up with a couple of guitars and a keyboard and a couple of singers and a bunch of people who didn't know where we were going. But we are in the next door to the liquor bar. That's where we started. Secondly, we moved from there and we moved to Rockingham Police and Citizens Youth Club. That's where we went next. And we would set that up every Sunday morning because we couldn't set it up Saturday night because there was other functions in there. And when we came Sunday morning to set up, uh, the, the, the kind of function they had the previous night meant that people had vomited. And when we clean it up for Sunday morning, that's, that's where we went next. You've got so easy here, you volunteers. Yeah. The volunteers then had to get there very early with mops and buckets and a strong constitution. <laughs> <laughs> we moved from there. We couldn't put up with forever and we bought, we, we leased this place, Brompton Road. It says number three, Brompton Road. Actually, I think it is three, Brompton Road. And we put a sign up the front, uh, on there because that time we didn't have the name we got now. But let's imagine it was Fire Life Church. Put a big sign, Rugby Pump Technology, right there. My office was up the other end. So it was up upstairs and we had a... And, and it, was, it used to be a wetsuit, wetsuit uh, warehouse. And people would still come there to buy a wetsuit. And if we'd been clever enough, we could have, we could have, we could have leveraged that. And, and then we, we bought this property here and we built this building first. And while this was nearly finished, we moved from there to there. And you go, where is that? That's right down here at the corner of, uh, of 50 Road and Baldavis Road. There's got the little hall and the bigger hall. They wouldn't let us in the bigger hall. Bigger hall's got fancy floorboards on it. You ever been in there? This one's as rough as. And we, we moved in there. And you can see it's rough as. So they've got bars on to keep people out and keep people in. But that's where we were while this building here got finished. Then, then we moved into this building, next slide. Oh, that building. That's the one you drive past and go, yeah, that's why I like you. Yeah, no, it's just, it's just a building. And, and then, we, we, that's not all. We were also in Kunana for nearly two years. That's Kunana. Kunana. And we had a name inspired for a little while until someone closed down that name and couldn't continue this name. That's, that's, that's part of our journey. That's part of the buildings we've been in as a church. Are you following me here? This, this, this building isn't the church. This campus isn't the church. Every now and again, someone will crack away just say, I believe us. Can you believe that? 
And then they might come back on site and I go, oh, I just love this church. What they mean is I love the grounds. Because if they've offended me by leaving, they'd never come back and say, I love you, Gordon, I'm sorry I did that. They never don't do that. They just love the grounds. It's not the church. It's just the ground. The church is built of living stones. Here we go. 1 Peter, uh, chapter 2, appearing on the screen near you right now. As you come to him, the living stone, Jesus Christ, rejected by humans but chosen by God and precious him, you also, like living stones, are being built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood offering spiritual sacrifices acceptable to, acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. By the way, by the way, this is interesting. Those of you who don't know who are bricklaying, it doesn't say living bricks. Because if it did say that, we would run amok with that and say somewhere as thick as bricks, right? You wouldn't say that. I'd be a fellow believer. Here's the thing. Bricks are all standard size. Bricks are level and flat. Stones are not. Stones are odd shapes. We are all odd shaped people. And you think to see the bricks, you, you, you lay your mortar and then you put the brick on there, bit of water on that end, stick that brick on there and, 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 and like that. But stones can't be built like that. Stones need to be re Surface, stones need to be refined, stones need to be changed as they are built. Jesus, take me as I am. I can come no other way. Take me deeper into you, make my flesh life melt away. Make me like a precious stone, crystal clear and finally hope. Light of Jesus shining through, giving glory back to you. And so we're building the stones together. It's a bigger challenge than building with bricks. Just a bigger chunk. One of the interesting things about building with living stones is that those of us who are living stones are also called big builders. We are living stones, we're also the builders. So Jesus asked his disciples one day, Who, Who's everyone saying that I am? They go, Oh, some folk, uh, Jeremiah, maybe Elijah. Maybe John the Baptist go back to the dead, one of the other prophets. Yeah, all that, like that. And Jesus said, But who do you say that I am? And Peter, the, often the spokesperson for the group, he, he arc up and he goes, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, uh, flesh and blood did not re reveal this to you, but my Father in heaven has told you that. And upon, next slide, and upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. So build my church. Well, and we go, well, good on you, Jesus, build the church. But he says, I want you to be my fellow builder. It's 1 Corinthians 3, 9 in your GWT. Uh, we don't look for things that can be seen. I'm thinking that is not the verse I want. I'm going to tell you what it is. 1 Corinthians 3, 9, we are God's co-workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. We are God's fellow work. We are his co-workers. We are his TAs. We are trade assistants. We are building as fellow builders with God, and we are building with living stone. Yeah. You got this? Uh, that's all the people. That's why I started by saying, you know, when people come into your house for the first time, I'm thinking about when they come into this house for the first time. I don't know what they're going to do to me in there. I think people like me go to a Hindu temple. Probably did our partnership Sunday. But Sunday night we had my coffee man, Puma, with mobile coffee pull up out here. And Puma got married in June this year and couldn't get his bride here until October. So he wanted to show his bride up because I, he, I, I, wrote a, I wrote a testimonial on his behalf to the Australian immigration people to get him in here and they wanted to thank him. Well, they pulled up out there and the, our, our worship team's rehearsing in here and, and she said, they have a look inside. So Catherine and I gave her the guide of tour, a Hindu girl. She's Hindu, right? You got this? And our band is rehearsing, they're singing songs just like they did this morning. And we brought them in all the way up here, look around here, down there through that door and back out through the cafe. And I couldn't help but say to them when we got back out in the alfresco area where we do coffee every Sunday morning, you know, I'm not sure that I would have gone into the Hindu temple with you in India. She said, it's okay. I've had a Catholic priest in my house in India. You know, I said, okay, then you can probably come back here sometime and bring Kuma in here with you. I'm not sure that I would though. I don't know what they're going to do in there. And 
I guess people that haven't been to church, they come through those doors for the very first time. We've had people like this often this year, this month. People come through and they've, they've not ever been in a church in their life before. We're all so familiar now if you've been coming here a little while. But you need to be thinking about the first timers. And you need to be thinking we're building with living stones and, and the living stones are ethnically diverse. Understand what I'm saying? A Revelation 7 9 from every nation, tribe. Revelation 7 9, let me read. Revelation uh, from every nation, tribe, people, and language. So, but I just want to build, I'm Aussie, and I just want to build with white Aussie Greeks. Sorry, that'd be so boring. <laughs> I want some black Nigerian Greeks. I want some Asian Greeks. I want some South African, I want some Kiwi bricks. Uh, I want some indigenous bricks. I want every kind of brick that we can get because that's what Jesus said from every nation, tribe, people, and language. There is no divide between the groups. They are all living stones being built into a spiritual home, the church. Amen. Amen. Well, that wasn't good enough. Is <laughs> that good enough? I'm going to say it again. I reckon we can do better next time. I like that. There is no divide. I'm going to do this again. <laughs> if you don't clap, I'm going to. There is no divide between the groups. They are all living stones of all different shades and colours and diverse backgrounds being built into a spiritual home. The church is here. Hope you have fun this morning. <laughs> Sometimes I'll say to my wife, I'm going to tease it, which I don't do often, of course. <laughs> and so we're having fun now, too. So you are. <laughs> I am. Ephesians 2, 19 to 22. We're getting close now, guys. Consequently, if you sign up to Jesus and say yes to him, you're going to be invited into his house, into his home, and you're going to become part of his family. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and strangers, but fellow citizens with God's people and also members of his household. Members of his what? Household. <laughs> Built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, as the Old Testament and New Testament, by the way, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone, he sets how it will all level out, and in him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his... Spirit. Which God lives by his... Spirit. Spirit. Amen. God has invited us into his house and his ho in his house we become part of the family of God. This is the home. John 14, 2 to 3. Uh, Jesus made sure we knew about this. He said, my father's house has many rooms. There it is on the screen. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back, I will come back, and I will take you to be with me that you may be where I am, said Jesus, in my home. So I want to finish this message this morning by reminding you of some keys about the house of God, the home, the church. The very first mention of the house of God in the Bible, was made by Jacob on his way from his father's house to his uncle's house way back in the book of Genesis, first book in the Bible. Genesis 28, 12, and 13. Uh, he had a, Jacob had a dream. Jacob's on his way. It's, 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 some goes down, he goes, I'm tired. I brought my backpack with me, so I'm just going to lay down the ground and, and use a rock as a pillow. And while he's there, he had a dream. And head on rock or a pillow is probably guaranteed to give you some kind of dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth and its top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. You know, up and down, angels. And there above it stood the Lord. And he spoke. He said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac. Isaac. I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are, are lying. Uh, God spoke to him. He heard the, the very voice of God there. And the next morning he wakes up. Genesis 28, 15, and 16. Uh, and I am with you and I will watch over wherever you go and I will bring you back to this land and I will not leave until I've done with them. When Jacob awoke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place and I was not aware of it. I don't know if it's another slide or not. I was not.
not aware of it. He was afraid, he said, how awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is the very gate of heaven. And I, I think about that because you drive past the Gas Place Life Church. It's just a building on some very nice green lawns that we mow fortnightly at this time of the year. It's just uh, three nice buildings. Uh, the house of God is us. Yeah. Wherever we might be, whether we're in Leisure Inn, PCYC, Crompton Road, Little Hall down the road, uh, building in Banana, or whether we're here, it, it's us. And Jacob's there, and, and he said, this is the very house of God. There was no bricks and mortar there. There was actually no congregation. What was there was angelic activity going up and down. What was there was the very voice of God speaking. And Jacob heard that. And when you think about that, no bricks and mortar, but there is an open heaven. There is the Father's voice. There is our angels going up and down. There's a ladder on earth reaching into heaven. This is the gate of heaven. And this is the picture of the church. It is the gateway to bring heaven down to earth. And it is the gateway through which people enter to get to heaven. It has angelic activity going on all the time. And the Father's voice can be heard. Amen. The domestic home, the ideal, is where human relationships are formed and where they are valued and where they continue to grow. And the church is where spiritual relationships are begun, they are formed, they are developed, and they are valued. When you come home to Jesus and say yes to him, whether it's in this house or somewhere other else, I want to say I hope it's this house and I want to say welcome home. In Jesus' name, welcome home. Father in heaven, thank you that you call us home. I want to build us into your house, living stones. I want to make us to be all that we can be. And Father, you want us to be fellow builders with you too in, in the house of God. <coughs> you want us to be open to new people all the time. You want us to actually bring new people. And thank you, Father God, give us that opportunity through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The stand church. I reckon being in the house of God is so good. I got you to clap before and get excited. You've got to say thank you. That he gets you into his house, into his home, and makes you a family member. And we're going to give voice to that this morning in our song. What I want to say is if you've never really signed up with Jesus and said yes to him, why not do that this morning? Do that where you stand or sit. And also come and make it known down front if that's you in Jesus' name. Let's sing. Give you our grateful thanks, Lord God. You don't have to come, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to come, but you always do. You show up in splendor. Change the whole room, change the whole home. And in any home, Father, that's represented here this morning, where there is some degree of chaos and angst, I'm praying for you to show up. Show up in the lives of the individuals in that home and show up in that home. Everything will be changed. Thank you for this church, Father. Yeah, thank you for the lovely campus you've given us and the buildings. Thank you that that, that is, is somewhat of a testimony. People drive by and say, keep up out of the church. You can't visit. Father, we want the doors wide open to receive everyone to see our way. And we ask for your grace to be poured out in the individuals in this house, this building this morning, in their lives and in their homes. Thank you, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. People, just before we move, just a few things I need to say. Uh, if you're going to the partnership class, you haven't been put on a care card, see them at Information Central, and just make sure you tell us which one you're coming to, AM or PM, it's next Sunday. So go and visit them there. And also, if you want cards to put in letterboxes, a number of you are doing that. If you're wearing a bit there, you're doing a lot of miles, I'll tell you that, by going and see them there. The maps are there, the cards are there, see the Information Central. Sausage sizzle this morning, even if you're not feeling like a snag this morning. 
The bloke out there that's doing them, he grins, so we'll have the, he'll make that day happen for you, all right? So go and see him, coffee in the cafe, and uh, race and toast at three different stations, go and check that out. I'd love you to come back tonight. Uh, if you watch Church News and you saw it on your screens, it talk about wandering sheep is the message. Actually, it's a bad title. It's about children. It's about the importance and the preciousness of children. Jesus taught that message, and I want to just share it with you tonight for those who have come. Now, Sunday night's sort of a different congregation on this one. Different people come regularly and don't come here. But if you want to come Sunday night, 6 o'clock tonight, love to see you here. Have a fantastic day. Those of you who have got a shape seminar this morning, don't forget that. It's on sometime later this morning. Be blessed and have a fantastic day.